Welcome back to 15 Minute Truth, Song of Songs is our teaching. We're still in uh, chapter 5, verse 2, and we're still talking about the crier church that goes before, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes before the uh, bride and awakens the bride. The crier church goes ringing the bell and awakens the ten virgins in the doorway. Remember, we saw that. Let me show you another picture of the crier church and of the two churches as a whole, Philadelphia and Laodicea, in the last days. Turn with me, please, to Isaiah 66, starting at verse 1. Reading from my NAS, it says this, Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me, and where is a place that I may rest? Then he answers his own question in verse 2. For my hand made all these things, thus all these things came into be, uh, being, declares the Lord. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble, who is contrite of spirit, and who trembles at my word. You have to be humble, realizing you don't have everything that you need. You have to be broken in spirit. In other words, pride put to, dead, to death as much as you know how, to the degree that you can. And you have to tremble at his word. I don't know how many times over the years I've talked with different people about the word of God. And they sit there and they look at me and they just shake their head no. And I go, what? No, what? And that's not according to our tradition. So what is your tradition compared to the word of God? You just read it yourself. It doesn't matter. That's our traditions. I'm not going to go against our traditions because my family follows those traditions and we followed them for generations. I'm not going against those traditions because how could so many be wrong? I'm not going against those traditions. But wait, what's the word of God say? It doesn't matter. I'm going with the traditions. Well, you are not part of this group. Because the Lord doesn't, does, as one person used to say, doesn't mess around. He means what he says, and he says what he means. It's not being a legalist. It's being a truth bearer. The Lord says, it's this one I will look. He's humble, broken of spirit, and trembles at my word. Trembles at my word. Oh, be afraid. Be afraid if you're making excuses for God's word because you're not part of this group. But this is where the Lord rests. Verse 3, but he who kills an ox is like the one who slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb is like the one who breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering is like the one who offers swine's blood. He who burns incense is like the one who blesses an idol. As they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. And this is speaking of the church of Laodicea. They've chosen their own ways, not God. Why? Because they're Laodicea. They've chosen their own ways. No man can tell them what to do. They rule. They rule. And they tell God, you have to follow us. You have to do what we say. And that's what they say. That's exactly what they say. And they say, they, well, he said right there in the Bible, you will heal. Therefore, I demand you heal right now. Is that the heart of God? No, your, your will be done on, in heaven as it, or on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, your, yeah Lord, you said that, that we would heal, but it's according to your will. It's according to your timing. It's according to the purpose of your spirit in the earth in that day. It's according, Lord, to what your heart uh, desires to do through me. It's not according to me. But these people have chosen their own ways. This is Laodicea. They have these wonderful sacrifices. And they say, praise God. Look at this sacrifice. And the Lord says, that's nothing. That's horrid. That's like offering swine's blood. That's terrible. Why? Because the heart's not right. Because it's their way. It's not his. What did he say here at the end? They have chosen their own ways. It's Laodicea. It's Laodicea. It's the description of Laodicea. Verse 4. So I, 
the Lord says. So I choose their punishments, and I will bring on them what they dread. Because I called, but no one answered. I spoke, but they didn't listen. And they did evil in my sight, and chose that in which I did not delight. They've chosen their own ways, so now the Lord says, now I'm going to choose your punishment. I am going to bring on you what you fear the most. What is it the church fears the most? Being left behind. All the movies made about it. Oh, the rapture is going to come and save us. The rapture is going to come and take us out. We don't have to face the destroyer because the rapture happened first. See, and this is what they're telling people. We don't have to see days of mourning because we're the church. And the Lord says, because you've chosen your own ways, I'm going to choose your punishment. I'm bringing on you the very thing you dread the most, being left behind at the rapture. This isn't a few people. This is the majority. The church tries to say, well, these people, they're not real Christians. I'm sorry. The Lord calls them Christians. They're a church. They're a real church. They're born again. The problem is their hearts aren't right before God because they're choosing their own ways. Verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brothers who hate you, who exclude you for my name's sake, have said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy but they will be put to shame. They will be put to shame. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Who is it that trembles at his word? Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 through 22. It's the bride. It's the bride. It says it right there in Revelations. She trembles at his word, and she will not change his name. She has declared his name. Your brothers who hate you, who exclude you from my namesake. What does his name show us? His nature. His name is his very nature. Jacob, the supplanter, became Israel, the overcomer with God. Why? Because his nature changed. Abram became Abraham, the father of a multitude. Why? Because his nature changed. The promise of, of God became real and alive in his heart. All of a sudden, his spiritual nature changed, and God said, now you're Abraham. Now you're Abraham. There's more name changing that's going to come in the future. The bride gets a new name. The, the groom, Jesus, gets a new name. Praise God, because things are going to change for us again. Those who tremble at his word, they will be kicked out over his name. And when they're kicking out the bride saints from the church, they're crying out, oh, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. But instead, it says, but they will be put to shame. It's literally, but they shall turn pale. But they shall turn pale. Why will they turn pale? Out of fear and dread. Why? Because the thing that they dread the most will come upon them. Because those who they excluded and kicked out of their churches and out of their presence were the ones who were raptured. And they were left behind. And the deception will fall off like a cloak, like scales from their eyes. And they suddenly will see and know the ministry of the bride, the very things spoken by the bride saints were real and they were true. They'll turn pale when they realize what they have done. Verse 6, a voice of uproar from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord who is rendering recompense to his enemy. Then it goes on, verse 7, before she travailed the bride, she brought forth, so here we have the pregnant woman, the same picture in Revelation chapter 12, the same picture in, in Song of Songs chapter 5, the pregnant woman, and chapter 5 and chapter 8. Before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. The word boy is literally a man-child, a man-child. It's a whole group. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth at once? So it's a whole group of people. 
As soon as Zion travailed, she also brought forth her sons, plural. There's a whole army of saints. The Lord says, shall I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Or shall I give delivery uh, or shut the womb, says your God? And the answer is, of course not. No, he's going to make it happen, in other words. He's going to make it happen. Back to our context in Song of Songs. We were speaking from verse, or chapter 8, verse 5. Before beneath the apple tree awakened you, there your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. It's the birth of the bride. It's the birth of the bride. But the Lord says right there that he leads these early ones out of the desert. He leads them out of the desert. To where? Back to her mother who is ready to give birth. The picture is the crier church, Matthew 25, 1 through 13, the crier church coming before, ringing the bell out of the desert, leaning on her beloved. It's very interesting in chapter 8 of Song of Songs. She, she goes on, I'm going to read a few verses here, sorry, verse 1. She cries out to the, to the groom, Oh, that you were a brother to me who nursed at my mother's breast. If I found you outdoors, I would kiss you and no one would despise me either. I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother who used, past tense, used, to instruct me. I would give you spiced wine and drink from the juice of the pomegranates. And so what she's saying is, I would bring you back to my mother's house. But by verse 5, she does. The Lord leads her back to her mother, who was underneath the apple tree, the tree of decision. We'll talk about that more when we get to, to chapter 8. The tree of decision. Will you be a bride saint or will you be Laodicea? In the hour of the birth of the man-child bride company of saints, there's a big decision that has to be made. That decision is seen in Revelations chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And we'll go there at another time. But I want to get back for a few minutes, back to our verse 2 of chapter 5 in Song of Songs. Hope that wasn't too confusing. Nice thing about these videos, you can run them back and listen again. So the picture here again is this. The picture is the crier church is coming and is ringing the bell, is knocking on the door of the heart of the bride. The crier church has been brought to her mother who is giving birth at that very moment to the bride saints. The crier church is right there at the birth and is encouraging and crying out to those within the woman the hidden church, you can't see them. They're hidden inside her. You can't see them until they're birthed. She's crying out. She's saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. And the bride will respond and will come forth and be birthed. The picture here is the bride comes awake. The bride awakens. Picture in, in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, the ten virgins awaken. Same things, same pictures, or excuse me, different pictures, same truths being spoken in different ways, in different places. Scripture, we're told that we understand doctrine here a little, there a little. Precept upon precept throughout the Word of God, and exactly what we're seeing here. This deeper truth is this that this is the Lord to his crier church that is awakening the woman that's asleep on her bed. Amen. Let's look at this again in our next video at, in Song of Songs. Lord bless you.